Hello, and thanks for tuning in to Calling All Mutants, Getting Started with Striker. My name is Jordan Levin, and I'm a developer at Sparkbox. During this video, I'm going to go over how to add Striker, a popular mutation testing framework for JavaScript, to your project. If you missed the first part of this two-part series, be sure to watch it to learn what mutation testing is and how it can fit into your overall testing strategy. We previously went over what mutation testing is. Now that we've covered the basics, we're able to add it as a new tool to our project. We're no longer reliant exclusively on code coverage to give us assurance that we're comprehensively testing our code. Mutation testing supplements our traditional code coverage to check both the distance and depth of our testing strategy. And since we're using our existing test suite, there's little additional work to get up and running. So the next step is to get started with the mutation testing framework. For Sparkbox, we use Striker, a popular mutation testing framework with great support for JavaScript. Getting started with Striker with your JavaScript project is easy. Start by navigating into your project and installing the Striker core package. Once installed, you can run npx striker init to generate your config file. This will prompt you to choose from a list of options to create your configuration file, like whether you're using a framework like React or Vue, or maybe just plain JavaScript. The type of test runner you're already using in your project, like Jest, Mocha, or Jasmine. The types of mutations you want to apply, like JavaScript, TypeScript, or Vue. And after a few other short questions, it'll create a config file that will be used for your project. After this, you're ready to go. Running npx striker run will run your mutation test using the configuration. When run, your source code is copied to a number of temporary directories depending on the total number of mutations to run. Because our get difference function is small, it only results in two different mutations. A test where the arrow function is changed to return undefined, and an arithmetic test where we change subtraction to addition. In the case of returning undefined, the test fails, which means our test is smart enough to fail when the function returns an undefined value. But in the case of changing the arithmetic operator, our test passes, which means we need to take a closer look at our test. Although Striker will output the results of mutation tests in the CLI, it'll also generate an HTML report that you can view in your browser of choice that is especially useful when working in a larger code base. Here, I can see that we've successfully killed one mutant, which means our test failed when it should. But there's also a surviving mutant, which means our test passed even when changes were made. To view the killed mutant, I can check the killed section and view the mutation that was applied. In this case, the mutation applied was to return an undefined value which was caught by our test, since we expected 1 when passing in 0 and 1. But when I click on Survived, I see a mutant we didn't kill, an example we've been using during this talk. Striker swapped out the subtraction for addition and our test still passed. This indicates to us that we need to change our assertions. Back at my test, I decide to update the assertion to avoid the type of issue Striker identified. By changing the values of the parameters in my test, I can be sure that my tests aren't susceptible to swapping subtraction for addition. Now, after running my mutation tests again, we have successfully killed all mutations by making sure that my tests fail when the logic changing code is introduced to my code base. For questions, feel free to reach out via Twitter at Jordan Levin or via email at jordan at haysparkbox.com. And if you're interested in more guides on testing, be sure to check out our selection of content on the Foundry by visiting csparkbox.com forward slash Foundry.